I'm Barbara Bruxfort, Library Services Manager for the San Bruno Public Library. So you may already know that I'm really excited about teaching the community, engaging with you about astronomy subjects, and uh, when we're when the library is open in person and we can have events in person, we have a series called Coffee and the Cosmos where we talk about uh, astronomy related subjects and have guest speakers. And I don't know, about 18 months ago, we had a solstice lecture where I made a promise that we would do a solar graph project together. So this is the culmination of that project promise. I'm super excited that we received a grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services, which is administered by the California State Librarian, to make this project and other astronomy-related projects possible. And you can watch for those in the coming months and up through the summer, August of uh, 2021. So if you were able to pick up a kit from the library, it is going to look like this. And um, it has all the parts and pieces to make a pinhole camera uh, out of an aluminum can and some tape and some paper and some photographic, special photographic paper. What we're going to be doing is making a print that has uh, the sun's trails burned into the photographic paper. So let me walk you through how that works. Our kit has yeah, it's just black construction paper and two zip ties, a roll of duct tape, and then you have some electrical tape. This popsicle stick thing, actually, you don't do anything with it. It was just convenient for us to put a little bit of electrical tape on it because you just only need a like a four inch piece of electrical tape. So instead of buying 40 rolls of electrical tape, we're just doing this. And it was convenient to tape the push pin to have a place to push put the push pin so it was not floating around in the kit. And then uh, you have an empty aluminum can. This is a 16 ounce can. So if you're doing this at home um, and you weren't able to get a kit, I do have some more of these empty cans at the library. You can contact me at spp, sbpl at plsinfo.org to see if I have any left. You can have one. Or you can just take a 16 ounce, like an iced tea can or a beer can and use a can opener to take the lid off. So this is actually a supply um, that you would be able to bottle a beverage in so it never had the cap on it but you can use a can opener to take it off and I've, I've tested that at home okay and then the other thing last but definitely not least you have this envelope and it says photo paper enclosed minimize exposure to light and see instructions and then you'll also you also have a set of instructions like this inside just so that you don't have to keep looking at the video if you don't want to over and over to remember how to do things. Okay, I'm gonna put these back in the bag because you won't need those till the very end, the zip ties till the very end. The photo paper, so let me just say a little bit of a word about photo paper. This is enlarging paper. It's uh, photosensitive paper like this. I bought this on Amazon. Um, what I'm told, is what you need to do if you want to buy some yourself is get black and white uh, photosensitive paper, light sensitive paper, and get the matte or the pearl finish, not the satin finish, because if you, uh, the color doesn't work so good, the satin, I mean the, the glossy finish, excuse me, if the glossy finish doesn't work as well because you just get an engraved image and you don't get kind of the gradations that you get from the matte finish paper. So matte finish, photographic paper, and let me get us started. So first thing we're going to do is make like a lid for our can, because you'll see uh, this is just a one-piece can. There are some instructions online, um, different websites you can find that show you how to do it with two cans, and in that case you can use like a 12-ounce Coca-Cola can but you have to cut the can with a 
heavy pair of scissors and I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to ask you to do that. Um, for sure I would cut myself and I didn't want to um, burden us with that. Okay, so one thing that's super nifty about our paper is that we're going to use this to make a cap and you'll notice that the short way wraps just perfectly around this can. So that's a little bit of serendipity that we're going to use to our advantage. So you'll take your piece of paper and you'll cut it, I don't know, this is about three and a half inches and there's no precision required here. And we're going to then once we've cut it, we're going to make a little fringe, just like you might if you were putting up a flyer and having tear off pieces for phone numbers. So this, this is about, I don't know, half an inch deep. And there we go. So you can see there's kind of a fringe there. Um, then what you're going to want to do is have a piece of duct tape or any kind of tape just to hold this in place while you make your cap. And I'm told that one of the tricky pieces, uh, parts of this project for people is tearing the tape. So when you're, you've got your tape, if you've never worked with duct tape before, you put your thumb here and then you just pull and it rips right off. It's a lot easier to do it that way than to use a scissors because uh, if you use a scissors, uh, that works, but it sticks to the scissors and then after a while your scissors gets all gummed up and you have to clean it off with some oil and that's kind of a pain. Okay, so let's... I'm, I'm going to actually mold my lid around the bottom of the can since the bottom of the can is stronger where it doesn't have this opening. And we're going to just tape this on here together so that basically we don't have to hold it the whole time. Okay, do not tape it onto the can. So this is going to be, we're going to make this lid, we're going to take it off, and then we're going to put it here. We're going to do some other things before we seal our camera, okay? So you've got your lid here, your little crown, and here's the, the flaps. So go ahead and bend in the flaps. like that. Don't worry about it being neat because we're gonna we're gonna just completely obliterate it with tape in a little bit. Okay so now you want to make you're gonna want to make a, a top for this lid. So uh, you're gonna need a circle more or less the same size as the can, but there's really no need, no need to measure it super closely. I'm going to just kind of, maybe you can just make it kind of squared. All right, let's see. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to take another piece of duct tape just a short one. Okay, maybe I could use a little bit longer one, but that's all right. So I'm going to tape it here and I am not going to tape the can. All right, so. Okay. Didn't tape the can. All right, and then we're gonna use two more pieces to make like an X over this lid. So like, like that. And then another one like this. Don't get too hung up on making it perfect at this point because when we seal this baby um, we can just plaster it with tape. Okay, there we go. Okay, that 
it's really a mess. All right, so now I'm going to take a bigger piece of tape and kind of mimic that first collar that I made with paper and kind of put it halfway around or halfway up. There we go. That was pretty good. But if you have too much, that's all right. Just wrap it around again and then fold this over the way that we did before with the paper and then for good measure I'm going to put another piece over the top. All right. So we're going to want this to be watertight eventually because we're going to put it outside. Um, there we go. There's our lid. And we will plaster it with tape at the end. Okay. So now I'm going to put this just on the other side of the can so that I can see where I'm putting the hole. So we're gonna put the hole in the can and that is what your push pin is for. You can use a straight pin, you know, whatever. Push pin's just kinda nice and you might need your scissors to get it out of our carefully taped Hit. Okay, there we go. And push pin's really nice because it's easy to handle. All right, when you make your hole, please pay attention to this. Do it like this. You don't want to do it pointing at your face because you don't want the, the can to snap back and launch the pin at you or the, the thumbtack. Okay, so just choose a spot about halfway and make your hole. There we go. That's it. That's all there is to that. And then um, rather than unwind our nice um, well, I'll do what you have to do. You can get some electrical tape out of your garage, or you can just grab the electrical tape from here, like this. And this is gonna serve as your shutter for the camera. So it's just, you're just gonna use it until you install your camera. So you'll need a piece about, I don't know, like that. And then I'm gonna cut it and you're going to make a little tab by folding part of it in half right here in on itself so that you can pull it off later all right and i am going to find my hole and i'm just going to put that over the hole so that's your shutter also helps you remember not to tape over that um that pinhole when you uh, seal up your camera. Okay, so we're almost done making our camera. Our last thing is going to be putting in the photographic paper. So what we're, we're gonna be doing such a long exposure that, you know, um, normally you would want to open this, normally in photography, you would wanna open this in a light proof bag and very, or in a, a red light situation so that you don't expose the paper. But because this is a different kind of project and we're really almost burning the image into the paper, a little bit of exposure to light doesn't hurt. You don't wanna open this in this bright sunshine. Um, maybe, you know, if, if I were not doing this for the camera, I'd turn off a lot of my lights in this room and just, just have a, a lower light situation. But even with this, it should be fine. So just don't do it in a bright, um, you know, sunspot in your living room. Do it in maybe the bathroom with a with one light on or something like that. Okay. Um, so I'm taking, gonna take my paper out, and you're gonna take a look at it. It's a little bit 
hard to tell. Okay, so there's a there's a side that is um, kind of curves down, and this side is a little bit yellow. Um, and then there's a side that's a little bit whiter. And it's the side that's glossier and a little bit yellow that you want to have on the inside. So curl up your paper like this with the side that's a little bit more yellow, the photosensitive side on the inside. And if you feel it, um, the backing feels to me a little bit smoother and the, the photosensitive side feels a little bit, um, I don't know, kind of stickier somehow. It does look a little bit more yellow if you look at the two colors. Okay. So I am going to put my paper into my camera just like that and super nifty. It fits right in there. And what you're going to do is slide the paper around. So right now my hole is here, but my opening is over here. So I need to move the opening in the paper so that it doesn't cover the pinhole because your pinhole, which is right here, I don't know, you might be able to see that little bump there. That's going to be where the light enters to expose all this paper. So it's like a wide angle exposure. And you can just double check that you're, um, you've got it right. You can eyeball it, you can see the hole there, or you can use your finger. Um, if you can reach down all the way to the hole and feel the scratchy um, pieces of aluminum where, from where you made the hole. Okay, so I got my light, light sensitive paper in there. Now I'm going to seal my lid. So I put my paper lid on and we're going to use up a lot of duct tape. So now we are going to tape it to the can. I'm just going to remember not to tape over the um, our little shutter there. We don't want to cover our hole where our where we want our light to get in. Just like all cameras, we have a place we want light and a place we don't want light. Okay. So I made a collar around here and. I'm going to do another one like that. And I'm going to put another couple pieces over. So this is the point where, if you haven't thought about it already, you want to think about where to install your camera. So this is going to have to go outside and I need you to be super careful about this and warn you about this. Um, you want to choose a place where your pinhole will face, will look at the tracks of the sun. So you want to put it like in a south facing, east, southeast facing, southwest facing location. You don't want to put it on a north facing location where you're not really going to see any solar tracks. So you want to think about the direction. Um, if you're a little bit wondering what that means, spend a day or two just noticing how the sun moves across the sky where you live and think about where what location will best capture the sun. So that's one thing you need to think about. Next thing you think about need to think about is that you have to have permission from the property owner. Hopefully it's your property or your apartment or your window where you're fastening fastening this item because this looks like a suspicious container. Okay. So we don't want to scare people with our solar pinhole solar cameras and we want these to be up a long time. And so we want to put them in a place where they're not that conspicuous or they're on a uh, property that's controlled completely by you where nobody's going to see it and get scared about what it is. Okay, so for example, I put one out on my back deck. Um, 
I saw a video where someone attached it to the drain pipe of their house, which I thought was pretty clever. Uh, maybe you're going to put it on your fence. If you put it on your fence, make sure you let your neighbors know what it is you're doing so that they know what that thing is. Um, I told my neighbor about putting one up on my fence and her first uh, idea, even though she's a science teacher, her first thought was that it was for some sort of um, like slingshot target practice or something like that. So um, I wouldn't want my uh, pinhole camera to be used as target practice with a slingshot. Okay, so just be um, thoughtful about where you install this. I think that you could do it from inside on a window, but you might need to um, make like a little housing around it so that, that the light that's getting in is just coming from outside. That might be kind of ugly from inside your house, but uh, you'll know best how to do that. Okay, so I have my camera all duct taped up really good. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take it outside and in your spot and fasten it in the best way that seems best. So I have included two super huge long zip ties. Um, I installed it on my fence and I needed like four small zip ties. So I got us some big zip ties to use. And uh, so you can put one, let's see, here's my... So pretend you're the sun. You're going to put one down at the bottom and another up at the top. So like a balcony would be an ideal place. Um, take a look around and see what you think will work for you. Okay. So there's your pinhole camera. When you get it installed outside, you're going to take the shutter off and it'll start recording um, your images. Then when you're ready to take your paper out, you're going to take this down. Actually, first what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of tape, of duct tape or electrical tape, something to cover this up, make it light proof, and you're going to take it down cut the zip ties and then use the scissors or uh, peel off the duct tape to open this up. When you're ready to open it up, the processing of this is a little bit different than uh, regular, it's a lot different than what you might otherwise do with photo paper. You do not want to develop this paper. You do not want to uh, fix this paper. You don't want to use fixative on it. You don't want to use chemicals on it because if you actually develop this paper, you'll just have a black, completely black image and you'll lose the uh, information that you have on this image. Um, because it's been exposed so long that you, you develop it and there's not going to be any image. You're going to lose the image that you have. What we want to do is we want to scan it on a flatbed scanner without preview. So test your flatbed scanner at 400 dpi or 500 dpi. Pull out your paper, lay it flat on the scanner, and scan the image. And then you'll be able to um, take the digital image and you'll have kind of a pinkish image and what you're going to do is invert it and it'll turn into more of a bluish image and you can manipulate the image um, so that you get this nice kind of ghostly uh, blue solar trails and foreground of whatever else is is in your picture so a couple things to think about there you don't have to worry about privacy or people showing up in the picture because anything that's moving around in the yard or in the neighborhood is not going to register it's just going to be that tree or that fence or that building that's going to show on the picture there's not going to be any um, people showing on the picture um 
I am very happy to scan these things for you. So if you when if you don't have a scanner, you don't aren't comfortable with that technology or the digital manipulation technology, we do have that equipment here at the library. We have several different scanners. Um, and I can help you do that. So if you'd like me to help you do that, what you want to do is just take this and um, take it down, cover up the pinhole, and email me or give me a call at the library and make an appointment and we'll scan your image and do the manipulation of the image and look at it together. So uh, you can get a hold of me here at the library at 650-616-7078 or you can email me through the um, library's general mailbox sbpl at plsinfo.org. It's probably better to use those general numbers because there'll be other people here that can help you as well if I'm not around. So and please uh, call me or email me with any questions that you might have. Okay, good luck. I can't wait to see the images that you make, and we'll talk to you soon.